In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Jasper AI's art function to get some amazing custom images and art just like this. We're gonna walk through everything step by step. I'm gonna give you some great examples and even show you some text you can use to get the best outputs. Let's go. Hey, this is Kevin from Solopreneur and on this channel, I show you the best tools you can use to grow your business. Do you ever find yourself struggling to find the perfect image to go with any content that you're creating? I know I do. Sometimes I find myself spending hours scouring all these stock photo sites, just trying to come up with the perfect image that's in my head, but I never seem to be able to ever find it. And I always end up settling for something that's sorta of closer, good enough. And not to mention these stock sites aren't cheap. Some of them could be as much as 20 or $30 for a single image. Well, with Jasper AI's art function, you don't have to worry about this ever again. Jasper can actually create that perfect image that's in your head with just one prompt. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through how to get the best output possible with Jasper AI. And also we're going to cover some of the limitations you should be mindful of so you have a good picture of what Jasper can and can't do when it comes to generating custom images or art. So let's hop over to my computer and I'll show you how it all works. But quickly, before we do, click the link in the description and you can get access to a seven day free trial so you can try Jasper risk-free. Okay, so here we are in the Jasper backend and we begin by going to create new content and just going to new art. Now there's two ways to create art. You can just describe it right here or you can actually use a template. I find the templates help a little bit and at the end of the day, you want to just experiment and see what works the best for you. So why don't we do a comparison here and see what the output is in real time. So let's go to free form. Let's say we are selling something to do with coffee. And so you want to have a, a latte on a table in a cozy cafe. Let's say you say that. Okay, so the next thing we can do is we can add some modifiers here. So let's say we want the mood to be happy and we want it to be a ink painting or uh, oil paint, let's say actually. And let's say we want it to be like Vincent van Gogh and so on. And you can do a few different uh, modifiers here, but I'll leave it at that. And I'll just hit create art. And let's see what we get. It does take a few seconds, of course, but boom, you can see there, this is actually pretty awesome. This one right here, you can see you have a few options. It's very Vincent van Gogh-ish. And then you can actually just save it right here or you can save it to a campaign, but really that's how easy it is. Then you can actually try it out as well in templates. So let's say we go to food photography right here and then let's see what that does. So the thing with the art is you want to experiment. Often it takes you a few different prompts and you wanna add some keywords and modifiers until you get the right thing. So you see, this is actually, this actually looks pretty cool. It actually looks like it's been photographed, right? But sometimes you can see something is off. Like you see that, like, wait, the glass is off. Like how is the handle just hanging off of this, right? So sometimes, or even the handle is broken here. Like it's not perfect. So sometimes you got to play around with it and get a few options. That's just the way the state of AI art today. Maybe in five years, it'll automatically be perfect, but it's still pretty cool right now. And so really that's all there is to it. You can just try and do different things and it's going to create some great outputs. What I recommend is actually you go over to, I'll link it down below, art.jasper.ai and you can actually see some examples. So let's say you're trying to do lighting and photography. You can see what they They've typed right you can see some of the uh, modifiers and some of the instructions that they've typed so you can see a photo of a coffee mug corporate even lighting stock photo so you can see all of that right so you can get some ideas for the kinds of instructions you can give Jasper and I find that's really helpful for you to help you understand what uh, types of modifiers you can use. Now, the next thing I wanna cover is some limitations just so you can understand where Jasper can sometimes fall short. So the first thing is sometimes it struggles with text and numbers and things like that. So for example, if you said, create a sign saying, no trespassing, haunted setting, Halloween, something like that, right? I'll just put something silly like that. And so you can see it's having trouble rendering that text 
kind of followed the instructions, sort of, but it doesn't know how to write. Now, another limitation is it sometimes struggles with humans and it can make some really, really odd stuff. Better I show you than tell you. So let's say you want something simple, like someone's in the gym and you want a man doing a bench press, right? Man doing a bench press, create art. And sometimes, as you might see here, it just looks off. Like, look, like the man's hands are floating, like he's blended into the bar. It's just like, look at this, right? Look at his hands, look at like, it just looks horrific, right? <laughs> so like, it, it, like it's it's really tough to get realistic looking humans. So what you can try to do is you can try that again. You can try making like an animated style and maybe that'll help because it'll be less photorealistic. So you can try when it comes to creating humans. I find it's really, really hard and I find it does a better job with inanimate objects, but we're gonna try here. And so you can see like, it's not the worst. It's actually a little bit more cohesive, right? Like still looks pretty messed up, but it's not as bad maybe. So yeah, you can see that it just kind of struggles when it comes to generating humans. Maybe this one isn't that bad, right? So uh, those are some limitations to keep in mind. It just might take you more tries to get it to generate an accurate human. But that said, like you can do some absolutely insane things. Like for example, a ninja eating ice cream in a thunderstorm. Let's try something crazy like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what it does. I've done some crazy things like that and it can just generate anything for you and it's just out of this world. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool, right? Like, look at that. <laughs> so it's not perfect, but it's still pretty cool. So uh, you get the idea there. So to recap, Jasper can create some amazing art for you but it does have its limitations to be honest. So the best way to succeed is to just have a little bit of patience and with a little trial and error, you can actually get some pretty cool stuff that you wouldn't be able to find on a stock site. Again, check out the resource where you can get some inspiration and to get some ideas of keywords and modifiers you can use. You can use both the free form version and you can try using the templates, but ultimately you just have to experiment to figure out what's going to produce the best output and choose from the images it creates for you. I use AI in my business all the time. I use it to generate everything from blog posts and landing pages and emails and ads to even video scripts and webinars. So if you want to learn how to do that, I actually have a guide linked down below that teaches you how to build all of those with just one prompt. So click the link in the description if you want to grab that free guide. And if you want more Jasper AI content, check out the channel. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to the channel for more content and hit that like button. It really helps me out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.